Yehovah Malak, Ola Molamat, Yehovah Malak, Yami Rakis, Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Theos, Yehovah Adonai, Yehovah Elohim, Kurios Theos Pantacreta, Kurios Theos Pistos, Elda et Yehovah, El Emuna Yehovah. Ibas Leon Curios, Otios O Panta Creta. Baslios Baslion Kai Curios, Curion. Yehova da Bar Halal, Elohim da Bar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Curion. Curion Nimohagion Panta Creta. Gadol Gadol Gebura. Zon Logan Ogar Tautios. Dulas Desmios and Despotes Jesus Christos. Kurion Kurion Kurion. Hagion Hagion Hagion. Kun Kiste as Olam Ate. Derek Emunabakar. Mishfat. Shaba. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Steady to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, an ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, making known the world to understand the impact of this great endless life in the power of Lord God the Holy Ghost. The life that which cannot be dissolved, being built by Lord God the Holy Ghost, breath by breath when we walk in the fellowship of it. But we have a passage for us to remind in Proverbs chapter 24, 29 in verse 24, teaching the importance of how we may not have the impact of such endless life in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, when we become robbers. We find over here, whoso is a partner with a thief, hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing, and bereath it not. And here today we need to understand, besides God the Father has given for us such kind of a great impact to be made known to this world in the power of Lord God the Holy Ghost, how is it we are turning out to become a partner with the thief? So we shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ. Whenever we come to learn the word of the Lord of our God, the first thing what every believer should know, first of all, he has been mandated to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to peripatao, or to have his business in the sphere of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. But we do see neither by thought, word, or deed. So God the Father has given a solution for this church age believer itself, the solution of the priesthood, 
never given in the past to any dispensation wherewith a male and a female can have their confession of sins galatians 327 and they can execute this unique spiritual life without wasting their life in the standards of lies so using the privacy of your priesthood the only sole purpose is that we can make the prayers which are appropriate to God the father and we can grow up in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine the first thing why our prayers are not answered is that we pray contrary to the will of god and though there are people who pray they pray out of fellowship and those who are praying they do not understand to whom to address the prayers in the power of lord god the holy ghost in the name of lord and savior jesus christ so having this many things of errors people do not get their answers but lord god the holy ghost records for us in the bible two things first on behalf of us christ our lord our god makes intercession followed by lord god the holy ghost the things to conform to the image of christ in romans chapter 8 so dear brethren having such kind of a great assurance we have been said come boldly unto the throne of the grace of the lord our god so that we can learn the mind of christ the will of god the father to be fulfilled through us in this church age and that's the will what we have been kept over here to get every believer to stand perfect and complete as colossians 4:12 teaches epaphras who has been one of the fellow slave the prayers of him is constantly making fervent prayers to god the father so that you can stand perfect telelios and complete call to be plero o in the telema will of god the father so our prayers to be answered back we have to be in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost day by day learning to do the will of god the father the same thing today for us also using the prayers of your priest in confession of your sins to rebound having this prayer let's come back and continue in proverbs 29:24 why is it you are not able to have an impact of such kind of a great endless life to this people to show for that we are true believers in Christ we shall continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pearly wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ infinitely divine holy father once again coming unto the grace of lord to learn the word father we pray that lord god the holy ghost would enlighten and challenge us by the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in the 20 past so that we could learn and be edified and in our every breath of our life as we walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost only you shall be glorified as we study these things father we pray that lord god the holy ghost would enlighten and challenge us in christ's name we pray sovereign lord amen in proverbs 29:24 he says the one who is taking portion with the thief the word portion shall lack it meant to say the people who have built up a wall of fortification in the discipleship orientation from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun they have nothing but lies to talk lies to think and lies to represent the word thief is nothing but for us the one who has erected in his virility and vigor in his body to say this is the only truth he doesn't come back and understand the importance of the original language of the scriptures which he need to interpret today as we were reading yesterday about the 24 books of the old testament right from the time of moses when he was been dead we look joshua called to be the former prophets joshua judges samuel and kings we don't have the part the differentiation like first and second samuel or first and second kings no there we find only one book samuel and then the kings here also we find the importance that joshua gave them to stand back in the counsel of the lord of god and whenever we come back to teach to you all to get back into the counsel of the lord of god the word in the past in the present or in the future it always mentions them those who make you all to come back in the come back and stand in the counsel of the lord of god and set apart the works of your evil and 
go out from the doings of such things and but come back and do the will of God in the righteous standards of the word. Such men are all the time being sent by the Lord and these are the men who cannot have partnership with the thief. So who are the thief? The thieves are the people who have erected in them the false scale of values. So who is it? Right from the beginning, Satan to beguile your mind, to deceive your thinking. That's what we see, we read in Second Corinthians when he says, we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. So in First Thessalonians 4, he says, let us walk honestly. Let us prove the things that which have been called to the sanctification. We are called to sanctification, not unto uncleanliness. So the thief will walk in lies and those who are having portion with the standards of lies, they are hating their own soul. They don't love their soul. They feed their soul with lies. We have been given in the church age to have an impact of such kind of a great endless life. Zoe a kataluo. In the power of dunamis, not even iskun or Kratos or Exusia, but the power is dunamis. The same thing what Apostle Paul says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, our Lord of a God, who strengthens me. Again, the word dunamis. So, dear brethren, we have been given the power of an ultimate one meant to be dunamis. In that dunamis power, we have been called to live zao a kataluo, the life which is endless, the life which cannot be destroyed. That life is not when we begin in the heaven. That life is the time from the day when you believe in Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. And that life, we make up the footsteps first by drinking the sincere milk so that we could be out from the hypocritical mannerism of 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2. From there on, as we gradually grow up, we come to take meat and we now come to realize Without the word of Lord God, we cannot survive, Matthew 4.4. 4. And this is not the end. From here, we need to graduate to become mature one in Christ, Hebrews 5.14, as the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult son. And then you will talk about the way of, in Luke chapter 2, in verse 49 and following, when the parents come back in search of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he says, don't you know, I shall be occupied in the business of my father. So here, the people sent by the Lord of a God, or the people in the past, the prophets, in the present, the past teachers, and the great life being lived by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 2. Here, the logic is very, very simple. Anyone who has been sent by the Lord or been authorized from Yehovah Elohim, they have only one thing to do. They say, saying that in verse 49 of Luke chapter 2, How is that you sought me? The word sought is nothing but that you have been in search of me. And the word it meant to say, Expecting an affirmative answer. It is the Greek oik. And then he says, Wist you not? That means haven't you been acquainted? This is what today people themselves are not first acquainted. Far less we can make others to get acquainted. For example, now in the scenario over here, Father, the way how uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is questioning the parents, the earthly one. Haven't you been acquainted with? Wist you not the word meant to say, Ida. The same thing of the failure of Deuteronomy chapter 6, when we read, saying that the parents should train the children the way how they ought to go, while they sit, while they stand, while they walk, while they eat. Teach them, Yehovah Elohim alone is the Lord of God. The sad part when we read in Deuteronomy 6.23, when your children will come and ask you. Now actually the duty of the parents is to train them up and to teach them up. 
But the time is going to come when the children are asking and coming to the parents, what is this Yehovah Elohim? That means they have failed in the work for what they have been kept as parents. The same thing with the priest Eli. Though he said to their sons, what they're doing is not correct, they did not heed. So the parents have to train. So now here he questions to them, wish you not. That means, haven't you been acquainted? Or haven't you known? Or haven't you been in the standards of the things pertaining to the word of the Lord of a God where I have to end up? That every believer, like the godly seed, what he says in Malachi 3 or Malachi 2, verse 14 and following, that everyone who has been born on this earth should be occupied in the Father's business. Here is very specifically mentioning God the Father. But today, much of the Christendom, when we look, they are also occupied in their father's business. But we should question and ask them whether they are in the business of Heavenly One, God the Father, or they are in the business of this lies called as Satan. As I said, you are of your father in John 8. Right from the beginning, he abide not in the truth. He is a liar. So this distinction, first we need to learn whether we are of Christ or whether we have been of God the Father or being believers in Christ, saying that we have been sent by God the Father, does our occupation or business is been in the prince of the power of this air, manufacturing lies. That's what we read in Proverbs 29-24. If you are a partner with thieves, and this has a lot of impact, dear brother, on today in the present pulpit. Many pastor teachers have become partners with thief. Therefore, they don't come to teach the word of the Lord of a God as the word of Lord God demands, day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, and carrera upon carrera. They're not occupying in such great and unique calling of Yehovah Elohim, which has been given for them to understand. They have become partners with thieves. And they're not able to realize that their own soul is being hurt. But here he claims, No, you not, aren't you acquainted? That I must, dei, that is compulsory, it is binding, it is necessary to be about, or to be in the sphere of my father's business. That is, the word pate, and then the things pertaining to his business, as he says, the things to destroy the works of devil. And the same thing what he writes over here in Proverbs 19, 29 verse 24. Here he teaches to us in very simple words that those who are partners with the thief. So the word says, whosoever is partner with the thief. And the word thief is ganeb. And what is the word ganeb? It meant to say the one who steals away. And as he said in the time of Jeremiah through the prophet, they steal away from me or from my flock the words of the Lord. So whenever you don't give them the right word of the Lord of a God, whenever you don't teach them word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera, not even to let go Iota and Carrera, but rightly dividing the word of truth when you don't teach them. He says, you are Ganeb. You are stealing away. And today, if you would ask a pastor, a pastor teacher into his ministry was entered, if he would love to teach the word of God for you weekly ones, and from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 20-21, as per the English order, 66 books, do you think he is teaching all the words? All the Iotas, all the Carreras. If he's not doing, then he is Ganeb. He's stealing away the words of the Lord. He's not in the Father's business. And he has come to make up his own belly. He has come to build up his own life in this ministry, but not the Word of God to be the only life for him when he's coming into the high calling of Yehovah Elohim in this church age. He's not coming for that. So, dear brethren, 
The logic is very, very simple. They are thieves. These are not the one who has been given as efficient for the distribution of the ministerial gifts. The gift of a pastor, teacher, the gift of an evangelist, the gift of a prophet and the apostle, they have done their work. Now we have the gift of an evangelism. The duty is to go back and preach the gospel. And the duty of a pastor, teacher, Jeremiah 3.15, to feed them with proper understanding. And followed by Acts chapter 20, verse 28, to teach them the entire counsel of the Lord our God, not to shun, but rather to teach. So in all of these things, the point of the word of the Lord of God is very clear, very specific, very true. You need to teach as per the mind of Christ. And if you're not able to understand, then the word says you are a thief, you are ganeb, you are stealing away. And today, many of the pastor teachers who haven't inculcated the right word of the Lord of God to these people, but rather who stealed away, that's the reason why the church age is ending up in apostasy. And these are not just stealing away, but these are partners. They're partners of what? Not been sent by the Lord. Jeremiah 23. If they have been sent by the Lord, they would make you all to stand in the counsel of the Lord of a God. And you know, man comes up with his own Alibis to defend. And some pastor would say, Doug could give in every six months puppies of dozens. And this pastor would say, I'm not like a dog, I'm like an elephant. For every two years I'm going to give a birth only one child. And it's going to hit the earth, it will have an impact. Not like the small puppies of dog. And they go on to wait for two years but they don't come to do the will of the Lord, neither they work in the mind of Christ. Who are these? These are the partners with thieves. Therefore, we need to find that word when he says in Jeremiah chapter 7, in verse number 10 it has to be, Jeremiah chapter 7, in verse number 10, 10. He says that, And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name. And then we are delivered to do are these abominations. In verse 11 he says, In this house, which is called by my name, became a den of robbers. We are partners with thief. The one who destroys your soul by not giving you the word of God. He makes the house of the Lord of a God to become a den of robbers. The Hebrew word den is me'ara, M-E-A-R-A-H. And the word over here, me'ara, meant to say that which has been exposed to be bare. In the ancient Hebrew, pictographical representation it meant to say they have become as the people who are digging in the hollow hump so what they do they want to have to become a scribe but their head is filled not to be the scribes of the word of the Lord but the men as Christ our Lord of God reprimands in Matthew 23 making for them Every mannerism of phylacteries, every mannerism of great open prayers, every mannerism of wonders. You know what would be a greatest miracle? Being born in Christ, conforming to the image of God is the greatest miracle. Not the miracles of your healings, not the miracles of your tongues, not the miracles of your XYZ sicknesses. But now we could understand Man changes his behavioral patterns from animal instincts into human being. And from human being getting into right mind, as we read that in Mark chapter 5, being clothed when he sat in the sight of the Lord of a God in a right mind. This man, when he's going to do the Caruso work, when he was being told to go and tell, 
He did not go to tell. He went to Caruso. He went to proclaim, not only in his own town, but among the ten Decapolis cities. The man sitting in a right mind, becoming a human being, from there growing up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, flourishing in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, and doing the will of God the Father, and proclaiming the goodness of the Lord, that's a miracle. But nowadays these men are digging the holes to say that these are scribes, as in the past of Matthew 23, when he reprimanded them, having their heads strong, but not having that which could mean to say the word of God. So what they became? They became ultimate kleptes and lestes. So that's the point what we find over here. These have become the people who dig holes, who divert the things from the word. So they love to emphasize about the details of life. They love to emphasize upon the things pertaining to prosperity gospels of life. They love to make you all from animal instinct into human beings. And they say they have a great achievement. So they will be called to be as the people really fearing or having a pious fervent nature. But they're in return digging holes. That's what the original Hebrew says. It says that these are the men who are called to be like the den. And the Hebrew word for the den is called as Mi'ara, M-E-A-R-A-H. And that's a cave. And that's a hole. That's like a den which is to be exposed which is to be laid bare, or in simple terms, that could be made naked. So, over here it says, they are thinking they know the best, they can do the best, by saying that God uses us only in a 10 years once to start the ministry, though 10 years is going to keep us silent, and just in one day is going to use us. You know, these are the people who give such things. And they love to say we are like an elephant who give birth for every two years. And these are the men who have been given as the standards of den of robbers. These are the people who dig holes and keep. They're using this name of my Lord in blasphemy saying that they have been planned by the Lord such and such way, such and such things. In this present Christendom, in the completed canon of Scripture, the only plan what God the Father is saying is, do not be partner with thieves. Do not deceive yourselves with the things which you ought not. Take heed lest you may fall. We have been apprehended by Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, for the purpose of becoming His will not making our will to happen. In His will, every day we need to carry the cross, follow my Christ and do the will of God the Father because when you are sleeping, the last two years if you sleep or you say ten years once you are going to do the will of the Lord, the remaining time you are going to keep quiet. Because there are many ministers who say that. There are many pastor teachers who would say as simple as that weekly once they preach. If you sleep one night itself, the wicked is going to come and sow the tears and those are confident that the tears is near what they have sowed is of a great value and they also try to grow up. If you sleep for one night, this is the fate, then what will be the fate if you're sleeping for two years to get your gestation period like an elephant? Or you're saying what ten years God uses you? Or living apart such kind of a morons, coming to weekly ones preachers or preaching weekly ones in the church and not coming to teach it all every day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera how much more the enemy is alert. And though we know in the completed canon of scripture given to us the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, the enemy thinketh in a way, saying that it is Lord God who fighteth with them no matter however hard we may drive. That's what we read in Exodus 14.45. We need to expound that. The people, they thought we may rush in heavily and we may try to get them, but no, Yehovah Elohim fighteth for them. And there, the matter, no matter however hard they drive, Satan knows very well the thinking of it is corrupted. The thinking of it cannot achieve success. So what does it do? It loves to induce in your mind laziness. 
It says, come back and teach the word weekly once. Don't go to teach the word of the Lord of a God every day. That laziness is enough like the way how Balaam introduced to the people the sin. Because they cannot curse against the people whom God the Father has blessed. In the similar way he says, I have sinned. The sin of this people. Just introduce them. Then automatically, the wrath of the Lord of our God cometh upon them and is going to kill them. The simple logic what Satan is trying to do, calling you all to sleep six days and come back and preach the seventh day. But in the six days, what you are far away from the word of the Lord of our God, not even to give the tithe of your time every day, not the income people love to have to beg and to crawl and to cry and to weep and to wail and to say, if you don't give income to the church, you will be cursed, you will be this, you will be that. Because they want to run, their evil lusts to be fulfilled, so they ask for money. Whereas Apostle Paul says, I have paid rent with my own hand. I have labored with my own hands. And yet he was teaching to them the great word of God. These are the people who have been sent by the Lord who don't wait for money. And even now when the people are coming to the church, it is not a point of asking or begging them for money or for subscription or this or that. Let them have to become from animal instinct to human being, from human being, let them become the superhuman Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, confirmed in them. Let them have it. So if you're not emphasizing to them to get back their work every day, Satan knows very well, introduce into their mind weakness or the slumber activities of your flesh. Who is going to come and listen doctrine for more than one hour being taught? So that's have some entertainment. Because at one end you take the support of the psychiatrist and they would say, your brain cannot listen more than 28 minutes. That's according to the human viewpoint. But according to the divine viewpoint, even when Apostle Paul would teach for more than five hours to eight hours, they would sit and listen because that was the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost. And today God the Father wants in each and every believer such fellowship. To learn and to know the importance of being taught. No matter one hour of data, what we preach is nothing before the time what Apostle Paul preached every day, five to eight hours a day. And that too, it was not a completed kind of scripture. The things were yet to accomplish. Like the book of Revolution, when we find the seven churches and the seven angels, the instructions to the seven angels, and the people who would overcome what would be the fate, and the people who don't overcome what would be the fate. All those things being summarized in the teachings of Apostle Paul. But we have now a crystal clear information going back to the book of Revelation chapter 2. Such and such church, such and such instructions, such and such attributes of the Lord. He says, I find this fault in you, overcome. So he has given us all these instructions to be taught and it is not able to be finished. Though we teach every day one hour. It requires to preach and teach the word of the Lord of our God minimum, morning one hour, evening one hour, so that we can cover it at the speed, though we may not cover like Apostle Paul, but the people will come up and say, weekly ones, even in that 30 or 45 minutes is enough, because we need to understand, we need to know one of the pastors, he says, we need to know the heartbeat or the pulse of the congregation. And if the congregation is not able to be happy to be hearing the word of God for more than 15 or 20 minutes, your preaching should confide within 15 minutes. And they're trying to say that, and they've practiced it, and they've destroyed. They're making the inner mind to be starved a lot. Dear brethren, you need to wake up, because the way how Balaam introduced sin in the sense of observing the lustful patterns, Satan also observes in you the lustful patterns and makes you to be a partner with the thief. The one right from the beginning doesn't tell the truth. The one right from the beginning doesn't know the truth either to tell for you. So the logic with this is very, very clear, very, very honest, very, very true. Because the word of the Lord of our God teaches in very simple terms. Be alert. Do not become a partner with the thief. 
because you are sleeping six days and are coming to preach on the seventh day and begging them to come after the month with the tithe. You already compromised to be a partner. You have, con you have signed a deal. You have signed a contract with the devil. And therefore today the pulpits are lying in such a way where there is no proper inculcation of the word of the Lord of a God which has to be taught day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, and carrera upon carrera because of such great dunamis power of zoe, endless or undestructible life which will begin the day when you believe in Christ and from there on your call to grow up. First with sincere milk, then with bread, and then with a strong meat, because where the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons, and where we read in Luke 2.49, Christ our Lord of God said, You parents must be acquainted. What is the purpose of the children being given by the Lord? That same reprimandation stands good in our pulpits today. The pastor teacher, when he fails to train the godly couple, why they have been given godly seed. They get oriented to the details of life. They make the children to be in this world as number one priority and they make them to be insane. They make them to be animal beasts, competing, fighting. And saying survival of the fittest like the Darwin theory. And they want him to run the rat race. Why? To make money. And when this man doesn't even realize the importance of the word of the Lord of God to be taught to the children. But they first want to teach them the importance of this orientation of life making a winning bread. I don't deny that's not needed. But not at the cost of neglecting your permanent heavenly bread which is day by day, carrying your cross, following my Christ. So here, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the way he answers to them, aren't you acquitted? Wish you meant to say, aren't you acquainted? Oida, the Greek word. Have you not been familiarized with this? I have to be in my father's business. Haven't you been acquainted with that? How foolish you are as parents to say that word. That's what in simple words it meant to say. You are so foolish. You haven't got yourself acquainted with Christ. You haven't got yourself to realize the importance of this word of God. How foolish and ignorant and arrogant you are. And today the parents have failed to make the children to get acquainted with the mind of Christ and to do the will of the Lord God the Father. Therefore, this parents are also partners with the thief, which is nothing but their pastor teacher for them respect to one who has failed to blow the trumpet to teach to you all the godly seed importance. And since they are partners with the pastor teacher when they claim we come with such and such pastor, we come with such and such men, we come with such and such denomination. And my pastor hasn't taught me. My pastor has taught me only to have the things pertaining to marrying us and burying us, counseling us when needed. It hasn't taught us to carry the cross every day, follow Christ and give your tithe of your time to the word of the Lord of a God. So what he has taught for you being dear or doctor such and such, you follow him. And already he is a partner with Satan, introducing in your mind slackness to the word of God. And teaching to you all the importance of this world, the importance of giving money to the church, but not giving the importance to teach to you every day the tithe of your time to the word of Christ, which you have to learn, read and understand. If not, you have to attend the church, where the pastor teacher is teaching every day the word of God. Dear brethren, what Balaam introduced was successful. In Judges 17, when we look upon the tribe of the Dan being led to idolatry standards of worship, the priest whom he has hired, first he robbed the silver from her mother, he made an idol, he made profit, he comes back and gives back that silver. And he comes back with a priest for ten shackles of silver and one piece of coat. 
and trying to become a priest and then being surrounded by the army of Dan tribe. So they take him away and now he becomes a priest to the entire tribe. You know, today people are in search of such priests who could have according to the imagination of the standards of their stupid bylaws which are nowhere accord with the word of the Lord. They use and assume the word of the Lord of a God is there, but they never come up to teach that there it has to be nothing but everyday inculcation of Bible doctrine. Every day, carrying your cross, following my Christ, every day, renovating the standards of your thinking. They don't want such kind of a bylaws to be ever written. Because they say they are busy six days in the week working. The six days what you have neglected to come back and look into your field. To come back and see how the trees which have sowed are growing up. Or whether they have a proper irrigation system or not. Whether they are having any mannerism of other the grass or thorns which are growing up and destructing or coaching or choking up. The growth of the real seed. So you don't worry about all of these things. You are just running away your life for six days. And one fine day, seventh day, you want to come and you say, God help me in this week for such and such things and such and such things. And you want to give a testimony. But what you have lost in those six days, by not sowing, Satan takes an advantage of that. In the six days, Satan being the father of lies, inculcating in your mind lies, it goes to sow upon you zizania seed upon zizania seed, which is called to be the tear. And when the servants of the Lord of our God would come and ask, Lord, when this has happened, the Lord says when they went to sleep, they could not take care of their life. The right word, what I have given unto them, they did not protect it, they did not guard into it. So Satan and its ministers, they come and they sow to you the wicked ones, the wicked things. And he says, now let them grow. And in the entire life, though we come and ask you to learn the word of God, though we ask you to carry your cross, though we ask you to rebound, though we ask you to come back and become a scribe, what do you have? You are a thief now. You are a scribe in your head introducing all mannerism of lies in the pulpit to be practiced. That's the word meant to say, as we are reading, Mea Ra. And this Mea Ra is nothing but the digging process of holes. So you have your authority, not like a true scribe, ready scribe, by teaching the word of the Lord of a God and declaring the mind of Christ. But now we have authority to say, I have been such and such doctor, I have been such and such qualified one, I have done this, I have done that. I have been served in so many churches, I have done my double PhD. Who cares? With that you are digging holes to the church. In the past, when they couldn't have the right word of the Lord of a God. Like the things pertaining to the Old Testament, no fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. They may be excusable. But now in the present Christendom, though you have been given the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. And if you are not able to understand that these are partners with thieves. Dear brethren, you are going to destroy your own life. So he says, den of robbers. Who are these robbers? They open up their mouth according to the intellectual power of their head. And according to the demands of the pressure of such people. These are called to be as the Hebrew says, Periits, P-E-R-I-Y-T-S. And the words periits meant to say, these are robbers. These are like the one who are tyrants. So these are ravenous destroyers. So they break through, they breach in. And what they're breaking through now? Every day what the word of Lord God has to be taught. 
They keep it aside and they break through and they get into their own standards of lives. They destroy. Today just look into the word of the Lord of God if your conscience is true to God in the fear of Christ. And look what the word says every day you need to teach the word of Christ. And what the people they are practicing in the pulpits irrespective of any denomination what they are in the church. They have destroyed, they have breached up, they have broken up the walls. And they have destroyed to such an extent that they are not able to come back and practice the great and unique things what the Bible demands. And the congregation is also such. They love to have all the time itching your pastors which could praise them. But never they want them to learn or to teach or to understand the mind of Christ. So they too don't open up the Bible. And this Roman Catholicism, the people did not even know that they are having two testaments in the Bible, the old and the new. Because they just go to the church for half an hour to 45 minutes, whatever the service they have. First of all, to show off the beauty. Second, when the minister asks them to stand, they stand, they sit, when they sit, he reads and they sing. And even the things what they have been returned and kept over, they do not match the complete reference of the Bible, half-quoted scriptures, they stand good for them. They're great in having faith of ideal kind of a one, but they don't have the faith of the true living God of one. Therefore, we have this word for us. In James chapter 2, in verse number 17, Dear brethren, it says, it is a well-known verse to all. Even so doctrine, if it hath not works, People may say, we have heard the word of God and let's do charity. Let's go and feed the poor people. Let's do this. Let's do that. Listening to doctrine in the sense, putting back to practice what the word of Lord God demands. And what the word of Lord God demands, every day come back and learn, carrying your cross, become the disciple of the word of the Lord. Then only you are worthy unto him. Bible emphasizes every day because in a week, if you would look, six days, Satan is having the highest advantage because you are involving in the world. It's a test. And the people who can face the test are the people who are well prepared. Therefore, we have been constantly repeated and said we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. Because people love to have the standards of the wisdom of this world. But we are very well aware about the cunning fables of Satan, says Apostle Paul in his writing. And wherewith he teaches to us, be aware about the wisdom of this world. So in First Corinthians one twenty, he says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? That is what he's referring back to the thieves who haven't done the will of God. Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made the foolishness of this wisdom of this world? In 121, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. So your worldly wisdom doesn't help. But you are in search of the worldly wisdom, rejecting the right mind of Christ. You are breaking through the commandments of the word of the Lord, which is so much essential for us. So he says, It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Without preaching you cannot. In 1 Corinthians 2, 6 he says again, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Again, the people who are reaching the standards of Telelios, at not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, which come to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. And then he goes to teach. In Second Corinthians 1 to 12, For our rejoicing is in the testimony of our consciousness that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshy wisdom, but the grace of God, we have our conversation in the world and more abundantly to your word. 
Here, dear brethren, we have these words to be understood in a very, very serious way. Because he says in Revelation chapter 2, in verse number 24, talking about you are not aware or you are not inculcated about the depths of Satan. So there he teaches to us the wisdom of the world which is not worthy, which we can easily defend. And you should know the depths of Satan. What is the depths of Satan? Asking you to get absent six days to the church and trying to come back weekly once to the church with a well-dressed, well-shaped, uh, nicely scented, and coming and sitting in the pews. So he says in James chapter 2, dear brethren, in verse number 17, Even so faith, if it hath not works, that is, if you have not put the word of God in practical application being taught in the Bible, then it says, is dead. Because it is only alone. What you are listening, that is alone. You know how to teach you this. Adam, if he was not having his counterpart, that is the Isha, if this Ish doesn't have Isha, he's incomplete. He's alone, Ish, having his counterpart to fulfill him, to be a right partner, helpmate, then he's complete. Likewise, the word of God, what you hear in the church being taught, or what you read in the Bible and get you into your senses, what does it mean to say to come weekly once, and what does it mean to say to go every day to the church by carrying your cross to be worthy of his calling, and then putting that into practical application, for example, joining as disciples and growing up into grammatias, then it is not alone, but it is completely fulfilling the will of God. But if you have heard and not put into action, then it is alone. So James 2.17, people may think they are alone if they are not doing practical works. But we are not emphasizing upon the practical works. We are no way concerned about the practical works. We want first what the word of Lord God says to hear and to obey, that is Shamma. And to put into practice what does that Shamma which you have heard, for example, joining as disciples and growing up into grammatias, that makes the man from animal instinct to be transformed to be like the great and unique word called as human being. That is first your hearing. And then from hearing, obeying it in order to produce the desired effect of the teaching, that is called from animal or from human now becoming conforming to the image of Christ. That's conforming to the image of the Lord and that's a super miracle for us. And that's not alone. You are complete now. So, dear brethren, you need to understand the teachings, what we are teaching, it is better for you to put into practical way of life. Don't just consider it to be as a teaching and just have faith but no works. We have been told for you, join as disciples, grow up into grammatias. The people grammatias are the one who write the word of God and how many people are writing the word of God so that you can absolutely make effective use of your time. Now being constantly occupied with the work of the Lord of a God, it's a great delight in His commandments. And we come out of necessity to delight God the Father, but now He comes to delight in us out of pleasure. That's what we were reading. And when He comes to delight in us out of His own good pleasure, which is again told in Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3, that which is good, perfect and acceptable will of God. So we need to learn that which is of a good pleasure, that which is of a good thing, that which is of a great work in Christ. So having these great things in the Lord, having these great things in Christ, our right primary focus and duty is to first make ourselves delight in the word of the Lord. And blessed are the people who delight in the word of the Lord. 
because they come to now to learn the mind of Christ. When they're learning the mind of Christ, when they're delighting themselves to know the word of the Lord of a God, the greater the time they spend in Bible doctrine, greater the time will be for them to get oriented, not to be just alone, but faith with works. Therefore, our Lord of our God says in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. What a great word it is for us. But today people are not loving the Lord my God. Therefore, the faith is alone. Having no works, it is dead. The same simple thing what we read. You have made it to become a den of robbers. So these robbers, they come having a high inspiration in their mind to do such and such. But he says, who are these robbers? These are the people who breach up, who break down completely the right standards of the word of the Lord violently if needed even though. Because they have not been sent by the Lord, they love to destroy you. So he says, Den of robbers, Mira parats, and Mira are the people having the standards of their own scribal authority, not being the scribes of Christ, not being grown up to become like a ready scribe of Ezra. So these are the people who are having such scribal authority, and what they're having, they're having parats. And how to parats? They open up their mouth under the thinking of their strong head having pressures for them in their body to have some food or to have some clothing, to have some bread. And they make up this food or clothing to be number one priority so they don't hurt them because they should get the food, they should get the thing going on. So never they rebuke them as the way how Paul rebuked Peter in Galatians 2. He was not straight in accord with the truth. And now Peter also gives a testimony about Paul in Second Peter chapter 3, according to the wisdom given unto him. The people who are not disciples, the people who haven't had a strong stuff mind to understand the word of the Lord of a God, they don't understand the scriptures of him, the mystery epistles, what has been given, but also they use other scriptures for their own destruction. Now Peter knows what fault he had done, and he's writing a testimony about Paul. But here we find these people, they preach out of pressure. They preach according to the standards of their head. Why? They don't want to hurt anyone. Christ our Lord our God hasn't sent you to get compromised on this earth, to dilute the preachings. You know, a very common illustration earlier we used to have this postman, even we have now also getting the letters. But now everyone are using smartphones, so the usage of the letters has gone down. For example, if you get a letter, a message from the Lord, it is as good as given to the postman and he has to go and deliver to the respective audience. Now the postman doesn't read that letter first, doesn't open it first of all, but he straight away delivers that letter to the people to whom it has to go. If not, he's tampering. But here the pastors, they don't know what message to take. That is word by word, line by line, precept upon precept to teach the present circumstances of the world. So they think they got a letter from God and they alter it. Though the postman who is honest in his work on this earth, he doesn't do that. He knows anyone who tries to tamper it out, he would be put out of the work or will be kicked out of the job. He knows that very well. So he doesn't open it. He doesn't look it. Straight the way he goes and delivers it. As the way how Joab did in the case of his own death when David writes and a letter and sends to, to Joab in the case of Uriah the Hittite. The same thing what Uriah the Hittite did. He did not go to open what it was, why it was. No, he just took the letter, gave to Joab and Joab placed him in the front battle where it was heavy and he was being put to death. And legitimately now Bathsheba weeps. And after her comfort he takes her back. He, he takes her back. 
but the thing what David did displaced in case of the murdering Uriah the Hittite. But this man was so uh, faithful and honest, he did not even open the letter. The same thing what we are illustrating you now to the postman on this earth. He doesn't open the letter. It will be against the law. But these people, what they are doing, they have coming to open up the letters and they love to talk to you sweet, sugar-coated preachings and they don't emphasize to you what is the word. Whether they hear of Obeer, he said in Ezekiel, your duty is to preach the truth, don't alter it. In the translations, we have lost a lot many things of importance of the word of the Lord. Far less we could worry and think about saying this would be best or that would be better, this would be better. No. In the original Hebrew, you have some of the words to be expounded to them, absolutely crystal clear, like a naked exposition of the truth, a gala exposition of the truth. That you don't have time to talk about silly, loose, stupid talks so that you can breach the real things Break down the real standards and establish in you the stupid standards of this mind of man. Therefore, what does he say? He calls them den of robbers. I have called you to be my house, but you have turned out to become a den of robbers. And I have inspected it, said the Lord. You are breaking down the things what the word of Lord God has to be. You are digging up a hole in a scribal authority, thinking that you are really scribes. You have been really given the authority to preach, but you don't understand the importance of having the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. So what are these people? He says these are partners with thieves. That's what we find over here in Proverbs 29, 24, which says for us, the one he is taking his portion, he has built up his wall of fortification, having in his head like a Lamad principle from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, he has erected in his vigor and valor, in his body, a structure of thinking which is going to ruin. And what thinking he has established? He has, he has established the thinking of itching ears, what they demand. He has established what the people want to be weekly ones. He has established this to be the order and he goes on to follow the pattern of the men. But he is not teaching, being sent authoritatively by the Lord of God, what the word of Lord God has to establish in those pulpits. So dear brethren, God the Father says in Jeremiah 23, 22, If they have been sent by me, they would have made my people to listen to my counsel. They would have made my people to once again re-establish the thinking of Christ. They would have made my people to understand what is the right and the importance of the word of the Lord of God. But he says, I haven't sent them. They ran. At the end, you will consider it perfectly that I haven't sent them. At the ran. The reason why does he say so? Because you're going to lose your eternal rewards. You're going to lose, in fact, indeed, to escape from that second death. And you try to compromise in your six days with the world. You know, you're playing as good as a prostitution work. This is very simple, dear brethren, because uh, your right husband is out of the town and you're having to come the next week. And the remaining six days, you have your wrong husbands and your lovers, as the way Hosea chapter uh, goes on to describe all your adulterators, fornicators. So you give your flesh six days to one man and one day you think your husband is there at home so you want to give him that day. So what are you doing? You're practicing adultery. So six days you're giving to the world in the thinking of capacity of Satan being partners with thieves. But on one fine day on Sunday you want to come to church to your right husband. But the damage what you're doing six days cannot be recovered back in just one day. Because the intensified stage of the angelic conflict to live behind such kind of a great impact of this endless life, destruct, not destructing life, it demands every day, every day, every day association with the word of the Lord. Not weekly ones as these people that are assembling now. So you're making yourself six days, having your oral tree in the world and coming to be pure on the seventh day. So he says, what these are people? These are the people who have their portion with the thief. And what they do? They don't love their soul. If you are loving lies, you are not loving your own soul, which could be given by God an answer to say that which is not yours, you are not able to protect. Then how could he give you that which is yours? That is your resurrection body after you die and come to Christ. 
the things which are not yours, you are not able to properly take care, which is your soul and spirit, given by God the Father at the moment of salvation for you, that is the spirit. But you are born soulish and you are spiritually dead. So he says over here in very clear, in, in very simple terms for us to understand the importance of this word. And he says, you hate your own soul because you are having partner to be with the thief. You love your soul. Oh, indeed, you call your girlfriend or a boyfriend in your boy crazy, girl crazy standards. She is my soulmate. And perfect love casteth out fear. Why? There is no lies. If you're having lies, you fear. If there is no lies, there is no need for you to fear. You wait upon the Lord to tell the truth. You do the things which are pertaining to truth. And you continue to do the work of Christ, which are only to the truth. But here he says, if you're partner with thief, you hate your own soul. And the word hate is nothing but to have pressure from every side like a thorn in your entire virality or vigor and valor. Because you have lies in you, you lose your virality. Righteous are bold as a lion because they love truth. They live truth. Wicked who doesn't love truth, he has pressure in his vigor and valor of virality every side, every corner because he is hating his own soul because he's a partner with lies. He's a partner with thief. Coming weekly once, you are a partner with your Satan. Not able to graduate every day to learn the word of the Lord and to understand the thinking of Christ, you are partner with lies. You are having to destroy your own soul because you are a liar in return, partnered with liars. So these are the men that don't emphasize to come and take in every day the word of the Lord. These are the men that don't teach to you the importance of becoming disciples. And yesterday we read in Proverbs chapter 5 verse 18, the fountain Makor, being a scribe, grown up rightly in the word of the Lord our God, having your thinking mature in the mind of Christ. He has the scope of life. He has the scope of joy. He has the scope of everything, to have everything to be executed perfectly in this life. Fulfilling 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, so that man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The same thing what Apophis is praying in Colossians 4, 12, to make every believer to stand in the presence of God the Father, perfect and complete, telelios, followed by pleroma in the standards of telema will of God the Father. So how is your makor? How well are you to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And how well are you associated with the people who pray your perfection, your completion to be present in God the Father, far, far less. Today, men are in portion or having their partnership with thieves. So he says, Den of robbers in Jeremiah 7, in James 2, 17, he teaches, having faith, you are just dead. No works. We give you doctrine for you to become a practical oriented scribes, to learn the mind of Christ, to be the witness of his glory on this earth. But you're turning out to become partners with thieves. And what do you do? You're hating your own soul. And soul is the five facets, what we read, the mentality, the evolution, the emotion, the norms and standards, and the consciousness, followed by one, all sin nature which has been given to you at the moment of your physical birth. So when you don't change your mentality, according to the word of God, you're hating your own soul. Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Though you are old, you will renew your strength like eagles. But though that are ang, they may vanish, they may perish. But they that, that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength like eagles, teaches the word. How simple is the Bible for us? How clear and accurate is the mind of Christ for us? 
how many great things have been given for us. And dear, dear brethren, people are not happy to learn the word of God. You have buried your life to be a partnership. You say some of the people, they are slaves for lifetime. So you are slaves for lies. Though the truth has been shining, he said in John 3, 19, they are not able to come up and look into the light because they love the deeds of evil. They don't want to expose themselves in the light of the mirror of the mind of Christ. And this has been the fate of many pastors as well in the pulpits. They don't come to expose the word of God every day. They don't teach them either in the Zoom app what they're running out so that they could let them or even through this way, the way we are recording and putting in the YouTube. They don't do it. But every day, the time that is gone is gone and you're answerable to God the Father. If you are a serious minister of the word of the Lord of God being sent by God the Father, your duty is to expound the word from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, which you have to do it faithfully. And God doesn't want successful men. He wants them that they are faithful to Christ. And what a great calling we have been kept in the church age. And when we look upon the standards of these lives of these men, we call them these are really being slaves or partners of thieves from generations to generations because there is no light shining in their lives. Though the glorious gospel of Christ has been appearing unto them, they have been blinded as the way how unbelievers are blinded not to look upon Christ. When the Lord of God said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and we being the disciples of Christ, growing up into Grammatias, should shine forth as light luminaries, holding forth in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations. But even you, are not confining the word of God in the midst of such liars, sinful and adulterous generations because you are a part of it. If you are not a part of it, are not a part of this pose and crooked nations, are not a part of this sinful and adulterous generations, you would have shined forth, but you are also part of it. As he said, putrefying source from the toe till to the till to the top of the head, from the toe of the feet till to the top of the head. Why? Because they don't have vision. They don't have the teachings of the mind of Christ. Though the Bible has been given, they don't come to learn. They don't come to expose. Ministers are coming to make miracles to be number one business, but they forgot from a man who has been animal instinct, who has become a human being, and from human being who has come now to become to conform to the image of Christ. That's a great miracle all the time. They don't want to look upon such miracles. They want a miracle, for example, paralysis to be released. They want a miracle rising from the dead. They want a miracle all other mannerism so that their body could be once again and good as it was in the earlier state as it comes from the mother's womb and they want to make it up that body again once again dedicated to sin and Christ our Lord of God said to them go and sin no more to prove that he was Messiah he did such wonderful works marvelous works but after the completion of the canon of scripture he has given us only one great work which is to go and edify them Teach them the word of God. Let the thinking be changed. Christianity is all about thinking, dear brother. And if you are having a partner with thieves, you cannot renovate the standards of the thinking. And when you fail to renovate them in the standards of the thinking, you are a culprit. You are seeking and searching those things, saying that even I believe the things pertaining to the gifts of temporary are still in force and you continue your life and you destroy because the only one thing what has been given for us to edify you, if you love your own soul, he says, do not be a partner with the thief. But we find you are not loving your own soul. If you have loved your own soul, you wouldn't have spent your time in such silly, stupid things of this earth. But you hate it. And we should ask today this question, do you really love your soul? Which has been given by God, which is not yours. At the same time, you need to present before God the Father, conforming to the image of Christ, for which he has kept us alive on this earth from the day of salvation till the day we die. And he has demanded to love his mandates more than anything else, so that he can have all goodness to be enjoyed on this earth. But we are not interested to study the word of the Lord. We don't take in the mind of Christ. We don't learn the importance of this truth. 
and we prove in return we don't love our own soul. But he'll try to love the soul of a girl or a soul of a boy. <laughs> Yourselves are not a lovers of your own soul. You think you're loving the soul of your dear near ones, the boyfriend or a girlfriend, and claim to be your soulmates. You're living in illusion. As we call the word, the fashion of the world, of this passeth away. You're living in the standards called to be illusion, which are no way worthy. These are the standards of illusion, what you're trying to love. And these illusions will destroy you, dear brother, and take it granted. Because you say you're really loving, but in return you don't love your own soul, you're hating it. Every nick and corner it has been pierced. Your virality and vigor is deteriorated because you have been pierced by lies. Wherever you go on this earth, what do you find? You find lies, you find rationalism, you find empiricism. You don't find faith, you don't find the great things. What Caleb said to them, Though I am 85, I have in me the vigor of 40. The way how Samson prayed unto the Lord of a God and with the jawbone of an ass, he lived of thousand Philistines. You don't believe that vigor. And three times a day, Daniel prayed. You don't believe that vigor. He had his knees to be like a kneecap of an iron. Though he was 120 years old, Moses was not even debating in his vigor and valor, but rather he was having such kind of a great life. Even his eyesight was not dimmed, but you don't believe that because you hate your own soul because you're partner with thief. And these are the thieves who come to become den of robbers. They try to establish by digging holes or by deteriorating the standards of truth and that which is pleasable for them. You know, preaching the word of God is what today you can say you've really been sent by the Lord of a God because the things what God the Father has given to us as gift are the Dorian gift. We establish our authority by preaching the word of truth because the word of truth alone abides forever and forever. No matter the heaven and the earth will vanish off, but his word abides forever and forever. So the only thing how you can recognize has been sent by the Lord of a God is nothing but by preaching the word of God and teaching the word of God, not by these miracles or healings or the temporal spiritual gifts where these knuckleheads are coming to say they have the power of healing, they have the power of this, they have the power of that. That's not for the church age when the completed kind of scripture has been there including the prophetical knots. People want to talk about prophecy when that is not there. The church is a deadlock period for prophecy. Now the only thing we have is to renovate the standards of our thinking. We need to conform to the image of Christ. We need to go back to the word of the Lord of our God and execute our life according to the standards of the mind of Christ. For that cause we have been given this power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, indwelling in us. To destroy the works of devil, we don't require the power of God. But the power of God has been given to build up into the image of God. The destroying of the works of the devil when you obey the voice of Christ in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for us, we have that privilege. And that option we are opting, and we have to be very effective in that. But in the past, they did not have the option of being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If they were good, as certain few men, what they have been recorded in the Old Testament, like Job, like Abraham, like Daniel, very beloved one of the Lord, like Ezra, who was already scribe, they already destroyed the works of devil. Every believer life, they have to destroy the works of devil. And in order to destroy the works of devil, the power of Lord God the Holy Ghost is not needed. The power of Lord God the Holy Ghost has been given to build up and to confirm and to have an impact of this great endless life upon the life of this man. And to show forth... We are trampling Satan under our feet at every breath and to show forth we are confirming to the image of Christ by being not partners with thieves or Satan. We have been given the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for a greater purpose in this life. 
don't just confine it to destroy the works of devil which you can destroy the works of devil with the power of the word of god but above all you have been even given the power of lord god the holy ghost indwelling in you and what a great privilege it is for us that today though we have been given the indwelling mental ministry of lord god the holy spirit breath by breath we are not able to wake up and in return you are destroying your own soul and furthermore he teaches imprecation he is hearing you know what is that word imprecation the word meant to say in the vigor and valor of his alaf energy every time the word of the lord of our god teaches go now and join as disciples that's the imprecation dear brethren go now and join as disciples to the great and unique mind of christ in the alaf and vigor valor of you what has been given do not waste the valuable grace of the lord of our god but rather go on the word imprecation is nothing but for us Allah, which is the covenant or the thing pertaining to the word meant to say like swearing or curse or also it meant to say like human excreta. The Hebrew says Allah is a combination of Allah followed by Lamad principle. So the first Allah is an ox head representing the strength. The second lamad is a shepherd's staff representing the authority. So it meant to say the strong authority. You know the strong authority is nothing but the yoke is understood as a staff on the shoulders in order to harness the power for pulling loads such as wagon or plow that is to plow the soil. Hence the two pictographs can also represent the ox in the yoke. often two oxen were yoked together one the older one which is an experienced dog that has been teamed with an younger one which is of a less experienced dog the older ox is the yoke is a strong authority who through the yoke teaches the younger ox how you have to perform the work of using your muscle strength So here every time the one who is been there between higher authority or higher strength is Lord God the Holy Ghost. And every time you're looking upon the ways of your lives it teaches to you it's lie come back to the strong authority. Come back and get yourself yoked. But what are you doing you're wasting much of your life as an excretion. And you're waking up your life as been cursed. but you are not coming up to become the oath of the covenant of god so he says hearing imprecation what does this man do he doesn't obey it though he has been constantly repeatedly told in his soul get back and carry the yoke get back and become the work of the lord of a god by carrying your cross become a joint fellow heir with christ they say no though he's been constantly heard he's been said in his munching process in the blood in his view point of eye constantly he's been said become disciple become disciple become disciple carry the yoke of the burden of the lord of a god while you're in youth he's been said constantly do it do it do it and the word not he is telling the word telling is nothing but in his vigor and valor he has been erecting a structure so that every thought of him is not brought into captivity for christ and here we find this word for us telling is called nagad and you yourselves should wake up to tell if it doesn't come to tell there is no one who would tell that that's the meaning of the word naka so what you are why you are suffering why the days of your life have been spent in vain glory imprecation allah it goes on to teach to you all the time in the vigor and valor a man strong authority inside is there is asking you to carry your cross 
you are hearing that but you are not becoming to be what it has to be for you in your life that's as good as having faith no works that's as good as you are called to be the temple of the living holy ghost but rather you have made it to be den of thieves you are not proclaiming yourself your life to be counted worthy to the high and holy heavenly calling of christ you have been constantly imprecated by lord god the holy spirit you have been constantly taught by the mentoring minister of lord god the holy spirit and yet you are not nagading it out be wary at it meant to say you are not speaking it out if you don't speak it out if you don't tell it out that you are a partner of lies you have been partner with thieves and your soul has been constantly hurt you are destroying your own soul and if you don't come back and confess your sins and get back to be the right word of the lord of a god and understand the mind of christ if you are constantly not able to do it if you are constantly not able to understand it the word says dear brother and very effectively you are destroying your own life and that's what many people are today in our pulpits the pastors are not teaching you to become disciples we can find them out easily whether they have been sent by the lord of a god or not the believers are not able to read the word of the lord of a god and come to a conclusion that their soul is been destroyed because they are partners with lies and in their soul what they are having the vigor and virality when they open up their mouth it is not according to the munching process of the word of the lord at every breath whatever they do it is been pierced it is not successful it has been a failure and though we find this beautiful passage for us in exodus chapter 14 in verse 25 telling to us that satan cannot be a successful one though the proud and arrogant have digged and kept the pits they cannot succeed though he says they are not according to the way of the law so they cannot succeed they have kept and they have digged and kept pits in the same thing again he says the thinking and the character of satan ezekiel 28 19 it is a shameless one it cannot get succeeded that they don't come to learn the word of god the same thing what we find over here again the passage is what we read because the way how the chariots wheel they were driving heavily the word heavily meant to say they have the standards of scribes what we are reading now the den of thieves and they have in their own body their level of thinking by thinking to make every thought into captivity of their own level of standards but not according to the word of god so he says they are driving in heaviness in the vigor and valor what they have erected but we know very well they cannot succeed second corinthians 11 and 2 because we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of satan because it is a liar and lies cannot win over truth all the time we have truth to win therefore in sanskrit for us we have in india if you would look upon the emblem of india they would say satyameva jayati that meant to say always the truth win So the same thing over here. What we find, they don't, no matter however they drive in heaviness, the chariots. He's saying the Egyptians, we shall flee from the faces of Israel because Yahweh Elohim is fighting for them. And how does he fight? He wants to fight when you are a disciple. He wants to build up a wall of fortification, and he wants to make up your blood to think Christ. But if you are not nagading it out. if you are not able to understand that you do not know the depths of satan then how you would win you would hurt your own soul because you will be still a partner with thee therefore to the people of titaria when he writes in revolution chapter 2 he says you are not aware about the depths of satan and what are the depths of satan it's as good as you are not aware about your own soul whether you are still a disciple or whether you are making this faith to work into process of doctrine he teaches to us in very simple words you are not aware about the cunning fables or the depths of satan in revelation chapter 2 in verse number 24 the depths of satan and refer- and certain references which include revelation 12:9 where with he says 
and the great dragon, and was cast out the old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. That is, Patna with thief, you are, you are deceiving, you have been deceived. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him, in Revelation 13, 14. And he goes on to deceive them that dwell on the earth. That's the work of Satan. By the means of those miracles, dear brethren, think over it, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, and did live. You know, what is that? The word of God is the only one which woundeth. Satan, and why does it live, though it has been wounded by the sword? Because human are giving an option for Satan by having to be partners with thief. In Second Corinthians 2, love and lust, Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Love and three, but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through the subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Again, the word simplicity is called to be haplote, singleness, which has been found for us in the word of God. In Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, again, for such false apostles, deceitful workers, what they are, partners of thieves, deceitful workers, transform themselves into the apostles of Christ have no marvel for Satan himself to be transformed. Again, the word transformed over here is metaschematizoans, that is not metamorphomai. So Satan transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works, according to the ergon, what these people are practicing now. So the only thing what the pastor teacher is now to completely finish the counsel of the Lord as Ephesians 4, 12 and 13 teaches to us, Acts chapter 20 verse 28 to 32, followed by Jeremiah 3, 15. In nothing to be ashamed, but in everything to do the will of God the Father. So he says over here in Ephesians 6, 11, put on the entire panoply of God so that you may be able to stand against the devil wiles. The word wiles is nothing but that which has been taken as the cunning arts, the trickery works, the deceitful things, the crafty things wherewith it is lying in wait to destroy you. And you are a partner with thief. Though your soul has been destroyed, though you have been repeatedly imprecated by Yehovah Elohim, come back and become disciples. You love not to become the disciples of the word of the Lord. Because you don't want to cry out or nagad and tell what exactly is there in your soul. What are you? You know very well. And God alone. If you are not still a disciple, if you are still not been sent by the Lord our God, you may run around the world saying that you are like an elephant. In ten years once, God may use you. Cry out what you are. If you have been sent by the Lord of a God, make them to stand in the counsel of the Lord of a God and fulfill the work of the Lord of a God day in and day out. Teach and preach, teach and mentor the mind of Christ. If you are not mentoring the word of the Lord of a God to these people, their brethren, your partners with devil. In Ephesians 6.12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, and the darkness of this world, of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, he says over here for us in Second Thessalonians 2.9-12, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all dunamai power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in righteousness. If you don't believe the truth, you are having pleasure in unrighteousness and you will be damned. The word damned is called to be crino, meant to say put us under with great judgment. Knowing the depths of Satan is what we have been said in Titeria that he will be given nations to take hold of. He'll be given power over the nations, exuse authority, and he shall rule with the rod of authority given to you, and you shall break up the vessels, that is, you shall 
completely destroy the thinking of satan and you will be having this great authority from the father like a morning star and he says he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches so this morning star is what you have been called to be in the power of the word of god when you know the cunning fables of satan and if you are not aware about the cunning fables of satan if you are still not able to look and understand the performance of the word of the lord of god then you are still a partner with thieves though the people of egyptians they knew and they understood they turned back they fled back saying that yehovah elohim is fighting for them then when yehovah elohim is fighting for us how is it we can be ignorant about his great and unique call in the church right how is it we shall not be able to understand the importance of becoming grown up disciples in the word of the lord and dear, dear brethren if you still don't believe the teachings of christ you have pleasure in unrighteousness deceiving and if you are not building up in the truth you will pay back at the time of judgment seat of christ because with god the father you cannot be excused now you are having breath in your nostrils it is a time for you to use rebound and get back to the will of god understand the mind of christ realize the importance of the word of the lord now is the time for you to understand for what we have been kept alive on this earth and the greater you reject the greater you love not to do the will of god the greater the bible says you are having pleasure in lies and those who have pleasure in lies he says condemnation they will be separated crino why they will be separated they did not give heed for truth you are called to be the temple of the living holy one of christ not to be the den of thieves and that much of the time you want to spend on this earth in the standards of lies that's left to you dear brethren because it's your own will we cannot go against your volition the sooner you wake up it is better for you to know the truth are you partners with thieves by hurting your own soul though the implication of the strong authority in you to teach come back look and examine yourself thoroughly in the mirror of the word of the lord and live a life of truth and yet you say no i don't want to have to thoroughly cross check my life you are answerable dear brother to god not unto us but at the time of judgment seat of christ you will regret you will repent you would say lord give me one more chance but the mind of christ clearly teaches all the days of your life when have been given grace upon the earth used it to frustrate the glory of god now you came back to understand the will of the lord and yet dear brethren you thought you could be escaped but the mind of christ says no peace unto the wicked do not believe the words of this lying ones which will not profit you but rather it would say have pleasure in truth not pleasure in lies you want to be a partner with truth or you want to be partner with thieves if you are partner with thieves your souls are destroyed if you are partner with truth your conscience will reveal and say I haven't been at a disciple I am not a true believer in the Lord yet which you shall not God which you shall be right which will tell to you in your consciousness in the authority of the word of the Lord of God to know what you are exactly to know where are you exactly to know why you are where you are like the way how Adam's conscience was been judged 
And now we come up to pass down the Patsy, but we don't have the chance of passing down the Patsy because you have every thought motivational behind it and your intention behind it has been recorded in the sight of the Lord of a God in eternity past itself. There at least Adam could have Eve and Eve could have Satan, but you don't have anyone to pass down your Patsy. Because the great power of the Lord of a God which goes on to dig in your soul. Deep down inside of your soul it comes to teach you, it comes to teach you very clearly what it is. And yet there are men who don't understand to come out to their own consciousness in the mirror of the word of the Lord of a God so that they could have faith with works. And they don't realize the importance of this truth. And they go on to destroy their great life in the church age. The life which can have an indestructible impact. That life has become for you like a toy. And tomorrow, the judgment seat of Christ, dear brethren, after we die, we all should face the judgment. We all should stand before the judgment of Christ. According to the deeds that which you have done on this flesh. If we were conforming to the image of God and the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what a great joy it would be. But however, God the Father has given grace to this man from Adam, except the last Adam, till to the last one in the millennium, including we, are all the time rebellion to the plan of God. Yet he comes up with grace to give you one more chance. Do not rebel. Get yourselves free from the second death. Have your life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And be far away, being a partner of thieves, but be a partner with Christ. In the Sunani Lambonamai of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, wherewith he says, who is our joint partner, and let us do the will of God the Father in his grace. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Life is too short. At the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In our will telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that will you my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Sothan Lagan. Herald the word in season, out of sin, because the Dharma Truma witnesses where they have been called. And number one Dharma Truma witnesses in the link Trinity follow the Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma Truma witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire Angelic Oshri be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great, unique, high, holy, heavenly calling of your plan it is for us. We don't deserve it, O Lord, that you have called us for such kind of a great call in this church age. Yet, O oh Father, much of the people knowing not the importance of being partner with you, they have been partners with thieves. Though their souls have been hurt constantly, though you imprecate them to remember to their minds that they are not disciples, let them come back and join as disciples. Though you have given them grace day by day, having breath in their nostrils in spite of this corona sickness in the world. Yet, O oh Father, they couldn't believe and come back. They never had a pleasure in truth, but they made the pleasure in lies. Let the Lord you have come up with grace to give them a chance to understand these things through the infallible and inerrant word of God, as a designed mind to be in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, not just to destroy the works of devil, but to conform to the image of your dear beloved Son, wherewith holiness alone can build holy things in us. Let the Father, not understanding these things, they have wasted the grace of the Lord frustrated your grace. They have acted in anarchy and tyranny before they. Let the Lord be so gracious and marvelous one to forgive us and to grant us this breath in our nostrils 
so that we could thoroughly come out and nagat, have our consciousness to be told absolutely clear that we are still the true believers or the true disciples of Christ or not. Help us, Father, to understand these things and make these people to get inculcated in these words because the enemies of Christ will never achieve success. They perish and they vanish. But you alone, O Lord, stand and abide forever. And we ask that, Father, in your presence, that you alone shall reign and you fight for us but only on a base of becoming disciple. Build up our wall of fortification according to the truth. So, Father, committing each and everything into your mighty hands, we pray your renovation to be done in the pulpits according to thy will. From Ayota to Ayota, Kera to Kerara, from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20, 21 to be taught in isogogics, categories, and exegesis. And make these disciples to grow up into grammatias, and in return, go and make disciples of all the nations as your great commission abides and standeth good upon our souls. To this extent, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.